fit I the know, I fit know. Much no, sorry, I'm not going to have all this rubbish. There have been two great examples in the mainstream media, though, of proper stouches between top presenters and politicians. And I want to look at both of them first, actually. Let's begin with Boris Johnson, who completely owned that odd little gremlin, Matt Chorley, who is now based at the left-wing BBC over Brexit. This is quite an extraordinary exchange because I haven't been particularly impressed with Boris on this Unleashed Media Tour. He hasn't properly taken on the MSM, but finally he grew some balls. I think being at the BBC in a little room with that really awful gremlin Matt Chorley just pushed him over the edge. What, what, watch what went down. So there is one word that comes up. It begins with L. Do you, do you want to guess what it is? Um, let me see. Um, go on. It's, it's liar. Lots of people think you're a liar. Well, are, you, are you a liar? I know. And I, and, uh, I think that, if, you know, if, if whether, the, whether it's the, um, the bus, which in fact was the bus of truth, or This is the 350,000, yes. 350 million. 350 million. You, you admit in your book that that was wrong. No, I don't. I, do. I, well, I say that it was in fact an underestimate. Because it was going to probably to rise. No, you to don't. You say in the book that it, um, uh, the, the real fit, I know, the real I fit know. was much no, lower. Sorry, I'm not going to have all this rubbish. Uh, uh, it's, I've it's read total, your book. I, well, then, then and you reflect, say reflect, you say the 170. Reflect, it was more like 170 million. Reflect properly. No, what that's the that is the net figure that the UK uh, was sending uh, to Brussels to yeah. be spent uh, by the EU on projects in the EU. That the rest was to be spent by the EU on projects hmm. in the UK uh, with no control. Uh, from the UK, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that was why. Uh, you, let's let's so, not get too. No, no, come on, let's get. No, no, okay. come on. You see, that's the problem. You accuse me of being a liar. You accuse me of being a liar, and then when I actually come back with the truth, well, you don't, don't want to hear it. And the truth is that those numbers were going to go up. And and yes, they tried to hang all that stuff around our, uh, our you know, the Remain campaign. Uh, you know, why don't you say that the Remain campaign were a bunch of liars? Finally, some passion from Boris Johnson. Also, finally, someone taking on Chorley, Father Calvin, because it was fascinating, wasn't it? The moment that Boris gets him with facts and the truth, oh, I just want to move on now. That's hilarious. Firstly, he's like, I've read your book, I know. Boris should have been like, I wrote the book, I know. The cheek of it. But yeah, of course, when he gets the data out there, the real statistics, he's like, oh, let's not get bogged down. Yes, let's get bogged down with the truth. So you can't brush it over with a clickbait gotcha. They are. They're so grimy, aren't they, these mainstream journalists? They really are. But Boris wasn't finished there, Calvin, because he actually decided to use this exchange and this awkward interview to make a wider point, a point that we have been making about the liberal media for years. Uh, Chorley was completely owned here. It's beautiful to watch. Why don't you get them in and, and, and well, abuse? I'll ask, well, I'll, I'll ask George Osborne. Well, when did you last do that? I bet you never. This. I bet you have never. I bet nobody has ever accused Remain of being big, fat, pants-on-fire liars for the things that they said about what was going to happen uh, to this economy uh, after Brexit. And the truth is, you know, Osborne said there would have to be a punishment budget. Uh, he said that they said that unemployment was going to go up. Uh, the reality is that I ended my premiership with unemployment at a 50-year low, with people in paid employment, 620,000 more of them before the pandemic began, and youth unemployment at a 50-year low. Uh, we, I end, when I was, uh, ended my premiership, we were, the, we were the second biggest exporter of financial services, the fourth biggest importer uh, exporter in the world, uh, still attracting the lion's share of overseas uh, investment mm. into, into, into Europe, still the, still the biggest. Uh, uh, you know, why, why on earth do uh, my opponents, our opponents, not your opponents, Matt? Uh, <laughs> I don't have any opponents. Well, no, 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 you know, you're, you're unchallenged on this show, but <laughs> apart from, uh, apart from my, my feeble efforts. But, you know, why are they allowed to get away with this? Why is it? Is it, is it because the liberal media establishment basically uh, are, are for Remain? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Yes. It is. We got there. <laughs> he said it how, how it is, and that's exactly what the problem has been all along. The liberal media were on the side of Remain, just as the liberal media were on the side of having a Labour government and getting the Tories out, getting Boris Johnson out, getting Liz Truss out. The liberal media have been on the side of the liberal politicians this entire time. Thank you, Boris Johnson, for calling them out. 
Yes, indeed. Indeed. But now the next step, Calvin, is for politicians like Boris Johnson and Nigel Farage to start rejecting these interviews. Yeah. You yeah. know, come and talk to me. Come and talk to you. Right. There's a right. whole so, world out there. Yeah, so why is he even on with Matt Shawley? Like totally. twice this month I've had the independent contact me saying, Father Calvin Robson, can you give us a comment? And I just reply, no. Yeah. Like, don't engage these people. Totally. They're I'm not having anything game. to do with them. And, and and the thing that's frustrating, Calvin, is clearly he thinks he has to do this to sell his book. But he doesn't. Look at what Trump is doing with the independent media in the US. It's clever. It's so much better than Kamala. But look, there was another extraordinary exchange over this Sun front page, uh, which is about Taylor Swift receiving preferential treatment to get a blue light police escort during London before her Wembley concert, which, surprise, surprise, was attended by lots of the politicians who had decreed uh, that this was necessary. Although, of course, they say, oh, no, 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 it was up to the police, even though the police didn't want to do it. But this morning on Sly News, things got very tense between the culture secretary, Lisa Nandy, and the presenter, Kay Burley. This interview is revealing on so many levels. We, we're now in a situation where, I mean, you know, most of Sky Connected News... tickets from <laughs> Universal Music Group. I mean, most of Sky News was at these events in these same boxes as well, to be completely fair. Who was there? And well, you were there. I for paid one. for my tickets. And, uh, but the, I paid for my tickets. Well, he's paying for his tickets. Well, eventually you paid for them. But, but, you know, he's paying for his tickets and he's eventually, been clear I paid about for mine that because he thinks it's eight important. Eight months earlier. But he, so please don't do that. No, but he genuinely does think it's important Who else when he is paying for me? it. From Sky. Well, I, I mean, I, I I went, and I've declared that in line with the ministerial code. But you don't. Work but for your Sky. but your suggestion is that somehow they shouldn't be going. I, that's my exactly point. My suggestion. My, my point is that as long as they declare it and are absolutely upfront about what has happened, people can judge for themselves, and people will judge for themselves. You're absolutely right, and it's fair that they do that. But the suggestion that the Home Secretary intervened and made a decision about security arrangement for Taylor Swift is simply not. True. So, okay, Lisa and Andy <laughs> thought that she had owned Kay Burley, right? But what yeah. I found really interesting, Calvin, is they all hang out together. I know. It's too many. all at chat. Taylor Swift together. Yep. It's two good friends having a chat, and one of them felt that the other one had called her out, but she hadn't. She failed. Lisa failed to call out Kay in that one. And Kay's like, well, I paid for my tickets. But what's funny is Kay Burley's like, well, you guys shouldn't have been there. Well, why didn't you say that to them when you were there with them? Like, be honest with your friends then. Don't try and gotcha them on television. It's all a bit backhanded. It's quite nasty to see. But where Lisa Nandy is wrong is that, no, the police said that Taylor Swift did not deserve or need or require a blue light escort through the capital city. And the Labour politicians leaned on the police like they're their personal bodyguards to give Taylor Swift that escort. And then Half the Labour Party are in the box with free tickets watching Taylor Swift. And no doubt they got to meet her and get all the VIP treatment. It's disgusting. It should not be happening. These people are all in it together. And I just think it's so important, Calvin, that we keep on pointing that out. Because yes. they drink in the same pubs together. They play in sports leagues together. They talk on the phone together. I mean, they're all losers, by the way. They're all losers in life. That's why they hang out in Westminster, because it's the swamp. You wouldn't want to be there, oh, yeah. I promise you. They're boring dullards. Oh. But it's really important that we point this out because it frames the coverage. Because, of course, you're never going to properly go after one of your mates. And this is the truth of the matter. Most of those, those uh, COVID lockdown parties... Most of those high profile journalists were at those exact yes. same parties as well. And this is why most of the Labour politicians didn't get called out, it's including Beergate with Keir Starmer, which they skirted around. But they went so hard on Boris, who was hardly ever there, if ever, just popping in. They were the ones who were complicit. It's, it's also twisted. Calvin, you do have cool friends. So check this out. Calvin has been hanging out with Tucker Carlson and Kid Rock. He's going to tell us all about it in one minute. So don't go anywhere. I've been dying to hear about uh, this night out. Just before we get to that, guys, it is the best time of year. Football is back. We're talking Premier League in the UK and in the US, NFL Sundays and college football Saturdays. With that comes the glorious grind of fantasy football lineups. This is where your inner manager comes alive, setting the perfect fantasy roster, screaming at your TV, making last minute waiver moves. Listen, while you're over here making sure your fantasy team is dialed in, 
don't let your personal grooming become the guy that gets left on the bench. Because let's be honest, nobody wants to fumble their grooming routine. That's where Manscaped's Performance Package 5.0 Ultra comes in, acting as your all-in-one grooming playbook. From keeping things sharp down below with the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra to taking care of those rogue ear and nose hair with the Weed Whacker 2.0, this is the lineup that will keep you looking and feeling like a champ on and off the field. It will help you feel clean, confident, and ready to dominate your fantasy league. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra Groin and Body Hair Trimmer is the franchise player of your grooming Ross with precise trimming capabilities. It's reliable, efficient, and gets the job done without fumbling. Whether it's for a date night, a weekend tailgate, or just everyday grooming, this is the tool you want on your squad. And no one wants to surprise nose or ear hair making a guest appearance on game day. So the Weed Whacker 2.0 handles those details like a pro, keeping you neat and ready to go. No missed tackles in your grooming game. The Performance Package 5.0, though, comes with two free gifts today. I love this. The Boxes 2.0 Midnight Bravo and the Shed 2.0 Toiletry Bag. It is premium gear to ensure you're always ready for action, whether at home or on the road. So join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. I am one of them. And get ready for kickoff by heading over to manscaped.com. Use the code OUTSPOKEN for 20% off and free shipping. That is off your entire order. So trust me, you'll be drafting the real MVP of grooming this season. That address repeated www.manscaped.com. I've put the link in the show notes to enter outspoken when you check out for 20% off and free shipping. It is a great deal. Stay on top of your grooming game. Be ready for anything the season throws your way. But now back to the show and Father Calvin Robinson, I've been absolutely dying to hear about your night out with Tucker Carlson and Kid Rock. Here you are pictured backstage uh, with those two legends. So so, so was this at Tucker's, because he's touring the US at the moment, isn't he, Calvin? Was, was that where you met him? He is. This was the Tucker Carlson live tour. And he came to Michigan actually on the day that I got installed in my parish. Oh. So we had this big do in church, uh, big liturgy, and then we had a reception afterwards. And that's why the bishop's there in the photograph as well. My bishop, Patrick Fodor, good man. And we, we had a great day. And then um, he, Tucker's team were like, we're in town as well. We should, we should meet up. And they offered uh, to, to give me the VIP experience, but I couldn't make it to that because we had church stuff, which comes first, absolutely. But um, then we got to the show, we watched the show, and it was fantastic. Tucker starts off on a platform uh, giving a monologue on the state of politics before then going over to sit on the sofa with his guest. And his guest on this day was uh, Kid Rock, because Kid Rock is a Michigander from, from Michigan. And I, I'm not, that, believe it or not, not that knowledgeable about pop culture, so I'm not that familiar with Kid Rock. But <laughs> oh, I love but, Kid Rock. I, I used to listen to him. But I used to listen to him about two decades ago, Calvin. Well, he's sound. He was just speaking common sense. He swears too much, a bit like our friend Lawrence. But he's got family first values, uh, Christian values, and he's very conservative. And I was impressed by what they both said. But then I, I popped back um, backstage afterwards. I got someone who escorted me to go and meet them in the green room. And they were just chilling out, and I thought, this, this is nice. We had a bit of a conversation. I gave Tucker Carlson one of my Common Sense Crusade pipes, and because I've been on his show a few times, but this is the first time I met him in person. And I had a bit of a chat with Kid Rock, who said, hi, I'm Bob, and introduced himself. Uh, he, was, he was just so cool to talk to. And I said, you guys, you know, you guys must be tired. Thank you for indulging me and my bishop. This has been lovely. And Kid Rock's like, well, we've got to go and eat. Surely you've got to eat. Come, let's, let's go and eat. And so we jumped in the back of Kid Rock's, truck we had a police escort to, the, to this to this bar where they just kept bringing piling on the drinks and the food it was just an amazing conversation great time and we sat around the table and the kid rock's like i just want to call one of my friends and introduce you to one of my friends and they did facetime here, here's oh mr president how are you he only goes and calls donald trump <laughs> like he couldn't even make it up and this was the day i was getting in store so it was, it was such a such a privilege such a great day no way but yeah we had a bit of a a bit of a sing, a bit of a dance, some good Jesus music. And I think a lot of that content will be in Tucker Carlson's behind the scenes footage when that comes out from his Tucker Carlson live show. Father Calvin Robinson, <laughs> you are living the American dream, but you're still a transatlantic man, of course. And it is great to have you back in the UK today. We will speak next Thank week. You. Take care. God bless. Look, don't go anywhere because coming up in the uncancelled after show, royal YouTube sensation according to Taz on why Meghan Markle has lost another major media ally and should we be worried? We're asking the question, should we be worried that cancer-stricken King Charles 
has decided to miss the COP29 climate conference in Azerbaijan. But we're going to do this on our safe space, www.outspokenlive. It is our membership section where you get half an hour of extra content every single day. So you can sign up, register there right now, www.outspoken.live. We're back tomorrow at 5 p.m. UK time, midday Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Please hit subscribe on YouTube and Rumble. Once again, stay strong. If you're in Florida, I really hope Milton just gets completely, you know, uh, yeah, I, I hope it gets to a point where it's not going to cause a threat to life. But most importantly, I promise to keep fighting for you. Thank you so much for watching Dan Wharton Outspoken. Please click on my face just to the bottom left to subscribe to this brand new independent news source and turn on the notification bell so you'll be alerted to our brand new live shows, uncancelled interviews and special royal episodes. Outspoken is also now available as a podcast so you can listen to the show every weekday on the go wherever you are. You can subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts and I've put some of the links in the show notes below this video. Keep watching our outspoken clips to support this independent news venture with no spin, no bias and no censorship unlike the MSM. Most importantly, I promise to keep fighting for you.